Hello everybody. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is setting our base timing. So we're going to go through exactly how to set the base timing. Uh, what I thought I would do is there's a little bit to do on the computer. Then we're going to switch over to an actual GoPro uh, where we're going to have the engine behind me here. And we're actually going to be doing the timing on there so you can physically see for yourself exactly what we're doing. So we did have a whole engine setup video. So if you want to refer back to that, uh, please do. And it'll tell you exactly how we s configured the whole engine, tell it was an eight cylinder, 4.3, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but that's basically in this little section over here. You can tell it's got eight cylinders, a four stroke and so on. Put the firing order in, et cetera. And the firing order table is over there. So basically what we want to do now, and this is setting the base timing is effectively checking that what the ECU is outputting is what you're actually seeing on the engine. So that's effectively what you're doing. So when you say checking your timing, some people may refer to, okay, but I've checked all the marks on the cams and the crank and everything lines up. That, that's absolutely fine. That is the mechanical engine timing and that is fine. When you put an aftermarket ECU on, and it's not going to really matter which one you put on, uh, due to the fact that they are universal in the sense that you can run them pretty much on any engine you want, you've got to tell the ECU uh, if it's 10 degrees on the ECU and you see 10 degrees on the engine, it has to know that you could have, say, the ECU is outputting 10 degrees, but you could have 15, 20, 30 degrees on the engine, um, and then you're not going to have a fun time. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is, if you go to your trigger setup here, and again, this is part of the engine configuration, but we've chosen to go to one UZ FE VVTI from the drop-down menu, okay, and that's because the 1UZ VVTI and the 3UZ VVTI have exactly the same trigger patterns. They've both got 36 minus 2 trigger wheels, a single tooth on the cam sensor at the front on the left bank, and then they've got two cam sensors on the inlet cams that are used to verify the variable valve timing. Okay, So for this particular case, all we're really looking for at the moment is we're looking for the crank and cam, the main ones on the front of the engine, this is what's going to give us our synchronization. And obviously we're running fully sequential because we have a G4X Extreme. So we've got eight ignition and eight injector outputs. So each injector and each ignition has its own output and it's controlling it fully sequentially. Okay. So that's what we've got there. And obviously you can go in there and because we've chosen a preset example, we literally just have to make sure that these are correct. So in sense of we've got reluctor, which is the type of sensor. So in this case, it's a variable reluctor sensor. Uh, and then in the case of the cam sensor at the front, again, same story, it's a variable reluctor sensor. So obviously you have the two types of sensors. You've got optical or Hall effect style sensor or a reluctor sensor, okay? In terms of filtering and so on and so forth, you kind of want to leave the filtering low unless it's required to go higher. So you, you, want, you don't want to have filtering unless you need it. Okay, so just bearing in mind that this will be a type of thing if you're getting trigger errors or so on, you can obviously adjust the actual filtering um, to four different levels. I would always advise you start on the lower setting and then if you're finding that you're having errors and you move it to level two and that goes away, by all means set it that way. But don't ever start on like say four, start on one and see how you go from there. You also have the arming threshold in voltage. So in other words, this is when it's um, obviously a variable light sensor gives off like an AC voltage, goes up and down. Um, there's loads of videos about how different the signals that come out from the sensors, but yeah, so you can set the arming threshold and as it gets higher, the way the variable works, as the RPM gets higher, the voltage gets higher. So you can set these figures across there. So again, start low and then effectively, if you need to change it, then change it, but don't instantly jump to a high value. Start low and then change it up as you need to from there. Okay. So then you get to the calibrate section. So effectively, if you've got like a blank base map like this, you're going to come in here, it's going to say trigger offset zero. Reference timing is exactly what it says on the tin. That is effectively going to be locking the timing at 10 degrees. Okay, so on a 3UZ engine and a JZ engine, you'll see around the crank, the plastic cover there, you'll have 0, 5, 10, and 15 degrees. So theoretically, we could set it to wherever we wanted to and your engine may differ so you may find that it's better to have it at 15 degrees you may find it's better to have it at zero degrees you know that's just depending on your engine and where your timing marks are okay so effectively all you're going to do is you are going to be clicking that it's going to open the screen for you you're going to tell it where you want to lock the timing so we're going to stick on 10 degrees because we have that marking on our uh, system and then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to adjust this number here, adjust the offset until our timing matches what we've got on there. Okay. This one, number three, 
is what you're going to do once the engine's actually revving up. So effectively what happens is obviously the more RPM, the quicker things are happening. Sometimes you can find that effectively what will happen is the timing will drift. So what you would normally do is you would, what we're going to do now essentially is we're just going to crank it over by hand. Okay. And then what we're going to do is check the timing, see that we've got 10 degrees. Then what you're going to do is you're going to start it up and then ideally you're going to rev it up to about 3000 RPM. What you want to see is you want to see that mark staying consistently in place. Okay. So there's basically going to be two steps to our checking the base timing. One is going to be just cranking without any of the injectors plugged in or anything like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to start it up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rev it up. And then we're going to go to about 3000 RPM. We're going to have the timing light on and we're going to sit there. And then we're going to check and make sure that that stays constant all the way through to 3000 RPM. If it doesn't, then what you would do is slowly increase this value. Okay. Until you had it consistent up until there. Um, it, we say 3000. That's just simply because it's a nice sort of roundabout value. It is revving to like six, 7,000 RPM. Um, if you're up to about 3000, it's fine. It's usually the case that you're okay, but you can go 4,000, whatever you're happy with essentially. And you can go from there. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut off of the screen capture. We're going to jump on the GoPro and then we're actually going to do the base timing on that one. So we'll see you in a second. Rightio. Okay, so now we're on the GoPro, so now we're actually going to go to the engine and see what it is. So you can see on our screen there, we've got timing at 10 degrees, we've got the offset at zero, and we've got that at 50 milliseconds. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to our actual engine over here. So you'll see here I've got my little clamp onto our coil. You'll see for the time being I've actually unplugged all of the injectors and all the coils and everything. I've only got number one plugged in because we're just checking base timing. Okay, I'm going to use my light to help see down in here because it's pretty dark. But so you can see there on the crank itself, see we've got 0, 5, 10 and 15 degrees. And on the crank over here, we've got a mark which we've highlighted white. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking for. We're going to be looking for that mark to line up with the 10 degrees. Okay, now something to bear in mind is parallax. If you're looking directly at the top of the engine like that but you're looking at the 10 degrees which is sort of like that over there right then what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up getting the wrong reading because you're looking at it directly 90 degrees so what you want to do is you want to turn your view now what Toyota have basically done by the looks of it is all the pulleys and everything are kind of in your way so you can only really look at it directly straight on so we can't look at it like that from that angle we've got to look at it like that from that angle over there okay so obviously I've got the little torch on here just so we can see the markings for now. When I do the actual timing light, I'm going to take that away because obviously we want to see the light and we want to see it shine up and the torch will blind that out. So I've just got myself a little Sealy gun here. This isn't expensive. The one thing to bear in mind is that if you have a look here on the back of my gun, you'll see there is an adjustability. Okay, so you can actually adjust it between zero and 60 degrees. So in this case, because you want to see what we're doing dead on, you want to make sure that these are at zero. Now, I, even I've fallen into this trap where I don't check that it's on zero before I go and do it. But basically what this means is if you had a gun like this and you wanted to check 10 degrees uh, and you basically had nothing to work on, you could set that at 10 degrees there and then effectively your timing light on the actual crank pulley would show zero. Okay, so just be sure if you're using one of these guns that has the adjustable thing at the back, make sure it's on zero because that's what we're looking for in this case because we're setting the timing on the ECU. And that's what we're looking for over there. Okay, so nice and very simple. So I'm just going to pull the lights, pull the torch away now. And I'm going to get the, my helper to crank it over there quickly. So go ahead and crank it. And crank it again. Okay, so hopefully that's come through. It did come through on the camera a few times, so I'm hoping that it's all come through there for you. But as you could see, and it's, it's nicely the mark has stopped over here. So there's a little mark. So if you if you have a crank like this and it's all rusty and whatever, make sure you get like a, uh, what do you call it, correction fluid. We call it Tipex correction fluid. And you can mark this in so it's nice and bright so you can see it. But as you'll see there, the mark was actually flashing at 10 degrees, okay? So in this particular case, we're quite lucky because setting it on zero is the correct one. So obviously that's something Link have done within their system, the fact that we've chosen a drop-down menu from there. 
But just to prove that it does actually move it around, effectively what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to change that to minus 10 degrees. Hopefully you can see that on there. Anyway, I'm changing that to minus 10 degrees. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and take a look at it. And what we should see now is we should see that the timing has moved to zero. So go again quickly. And there you go. Okay, again, I do hope you saw that. But yeah, so now that is moving the timing to zero degrees. So we can see whatever change we make in the ECU is now causing the timing to change on the engine. So now we know that we should have our settings on zero degrees. So I'm just going to change that back to zero. Press enter, click done, control S to store it into the ECU. And there you go. So now we are happy that what the ECU is putting out of the engine is what the engine is actually seeing over there. Okay, so next step is now, I'm just gonna cut off here, then we're gonna come back, we're actually gonna fire the engine up and then we're gonna rev it up and we're gonna hold the timing light on there and to do that. So give us a minute while we plug everything in and we'll get it started up and show you what that looks like. All right? Okay, so we've done the base timing and now what we're gonna do is we are going to check it when it's actually running and it's up to about 3000 RPM. We're just gonna make sure that that light is and the timing mark stays consistently there so i'm just going to put my heads earphones on because it's going to be very very loud because obviously we've got no exhaust on there so i'm just going to quickly show you where we're looking again okay so now we've locked it at 10 degrees so what we're going to see now is as soon as we fire it up we're going to shine the timing light on it and then it's going to show 10 degrees so i'm just going to turn off this little torch so we're not blocking our own light so I do apologize if it gets a little bit dark in the interim. So again, making sure that we're on zero degrees on our gun. Fantastic, okay, so fire her up. Fantastic. Okay, so as you can see, the whole time that we were revving up, we had the timing mark on 10 degrees, and it, the important part was it was staying consistent and smooth. So now we're happy, so we don't have to adjust those values that we were talking about earlier in terms of the sort of, you know, if you're getting that sort of drift when it goes up to higher. Now, obviously, we went up to about 3,000 RPM. Yes, you can go higher if you want, but as you can see, it was really consistent and straight all the way through from idle to 3000 RPM, so we are happy with that. All right, so hopefully that's helpful, and that is giving you a lot of information on how to check base timing. Uh, again, things are gonna vary depending on your engine, and so on and so forth, uh, where your timing marks are, what you're gonna lock it at, etc., etc. So again, this is an example on a 3UZ, but the principles still apply to pretty much every engine. You're just gonna have to know exactly, you know, which cylinder to put your, your clamp on, and so on to get the correct reading. But that's it guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon, bye bye.